And we are back for another player construction showcase, my fellow Going Medieval fans. I have many more incredible castles and settlements to inspire you with and help you create your own masterpieces of medieval engineering. My name is Peter and I want to thank all the players who have sent me save files and screenshots of their settlements to showcase in these videos and invite everyone else watching to also send in yours. The email address is in the description below and there you will also find links to previous showcase episodes and all my guides and let's plays of this game. First up is this massive settlement by Captain Kent Gaming, but I just couldn't resist not showing you this ludicrous scene here. Almost a dozen settlers in full plate steel armor harvesting in this small garden. It's just so immersion breaking that I hope developers will introduce proper work clothing in some future content update. Zooming out and taking in this settlement in its entirety is quite difficult actually, because not only is the main settlement huge, but there are also many towers expanding its zone of control across the map. They all have the same design, which is similar to the towers on the tall and thick curtain wall. As they are quite big, I had no doubt they are hollow inside, and when I took a look to see what was in them, I was expecting weapons and maybe a guard post, but what I actually found was much more interesting. An underground passageway many levels deep and leading towards the center of the map and settlement. Then I saw many more such tunnels and realized that all the towers are connected in such a way. Going up at the place where these tunnels meet, we find an exit in the middle of the settlement. So as you can see here, Captain Kent doesn't want to see enemies attacking his settlement, so he uses these underground passageways to send out defenders to the map's edge and man the battle towers, if I may call them so. It's not a new approach to settlement defense, it's perfectly doable on a small map size, but I must admit, I have never seen it done on such a vast scale. If you remember in the first episode of Player Construction Showcase, I showed you a castle with exactly this defense design, but there was only one such tower structure with an underground tunnel connection. Here we have a dozen of them. If the raiders manage to get around these, this is what awaits them at the main gates. Twin towers of different design and shape, which have this rounded main structure and a lot of details. But what really drew my attention was this part over here. At first, I wasn't sure what this was, but then I figured it out by panning the camera to the side. Stone windows placed sideways? <laughs> I must admit, this is another first and I applaud the originality of this idea. Past the towers and just before the main entrance is a very grand staircase with all these braziers and something I found surprising. These shields and the village fire emblem on them. This is actually an imported emblem made outside the game and add it to the game files so it could be used. It looks really cool, especially with the braziers all lined up underneath. I will have to make a video guide to show you how to import your own emblems. The gates are a simple double reinforced door and we can see that the inside is also very nicely decorated. Once I move the camera to a lower level, something interesting will catch your eye below the towers and over to the side. Hundreds of clay pillars which were used to fill in the ground right next to the walls. Was this mined out or just a natural depression? I don't know, but Captain Kent is invited to comment on the video and tell us. What is most obvious when looking at the whole settlement from this distance is that this place is made from many individual, separate, small and medium structures and as such differs from most settlements I have shown you. This section of the curtain wall has an interesting feature. Right where the food gardens are, there are two major gaps in the wall, totally exposed but not climbable. I must admit, I have no idea what is the reason for this. At the back of the settlement is a very thin wall and what looks like the main mine from where iron, clay and limestone are dug. But I want to go back to the topic of walls because I discovered something else while I was looking for what those towers held inside of them. So the thing is that the thick curtain wall is actually hollow and not hollow at the same time. It's filled with clay brick pillars and not just clay brick ones but also raw clay, limestone and wood as you will soon see. I must admit I was quite surprised by this but when I thought about it a bit more I realized this isn't a bad idea at all, because you want to have thick walls to prevent raiders with trebuchets from getting in easily, but it's very expensive and labor intensive 
to make triple thick walls with limestone bricks. They offer the highest hit point wall, yes, but they are also very time consuming. So what this player did was to combine materials in such a way that the highest HP pillars are on the outside and the softer pillars are on the inside. This makes both construction and repair less costly. But enough about the defenses and let's dive into the settlement proper. The first eye-catching thing is this religious monument. I simply love the design with its mix of materials, multiple stairs, candles and micro detail like these. Herbs growing in the corners below the religious wall decorations. Another such detail is up here, stockpiles on all four corners next to shrines acting as offering places for harvested herbs. Outstanding! Near here we have a mini cemetery surrounded by a low wall limestone tiles and there is an actual filled in grave here. And this kind of attention to detail with many different small and medium objects, gardens and homes is the real hallmark of this settlement. The largest of these and one of the best examples is the church at the back of the village. It is a mismatch of designs from many cultures so it ends up looking unique. Starting with its double door entrance flanked by religious wall decorations and continuing on inside with the rows of seats and an open altar with more religious decorations and a shrine. It's a rather tall structure and it hides some details which are easy to miss. For example, the candle stands on these walled off terraces and even an entire top floor with windows which let the firelight from several sources to pour out. Above the entrance there is a similar detailed roofed and inset terrace with more candle stands rounding off this highly detailed religious building. Off to one side of the settlement we find a mix of buildings with different purposes. Everything from a kitchen, great hall and single bedrooms to actual role playing outhouses. The villagers might not be using these but if the developers update the game and villagers start needing these Captain Kent here is ready for that. We can see that the Great Hall is fully equipped, as is the kitchen, which even holds an underground basement for storing raw and finished foods. Locating all three types of rooms next to each other is always a good idea to prevent settlers from spending too much time on lunch. If we continue down the line of these single buildings, which are, if you take note, usually built out of different materials, we will locate another place of worship, this one made obviously to get the most out of the mood affecting specialized rooms, as while the religious monument looks good, it's not the best at giving villagers high positive mood modifiers, something to keep in mind when making structures like that monument. Over here is an example of an armory, simply built, no beautifications, function over form and I totally approve. It holds top of the line backup steel plate armor and helmets along with weapons of all types. A curiosity here is this exhibit of raiders more interesting helmets, so an armory and a museum in one. Another first for these videos. And if you have been enjoying this one so far, please don't mind me reminding you to hit that like button, comment what is your favorite thing to build in Going Medieval and subscribe if you haven't already to get notified when I post more videos. As you can see while I look over more single buildings around Captain Kent's settlement, each one has a purpose and its own design. I love the fact that he was able to escape from making templates and just building many same or sameish looking structures across his settlement. Even his food basements differ in design just like all the outsides and insides of these buildings do. The ones which have an included walled off garden are especially cool and it inspires me to add such in my own villages. It is such a small detail but it adds so much role playing potential to the playthrough. I hope you have noticed an interesting semi rule in the design of these buildings by now. The ones which are built for settlers to live in are constructed from wood and clay while the buildings which have a function are constructed from limestone like a kitchen, armory and the library we will check out soon. Some of these homes, which are larger and have multiple levels, have extra details inside, like more furniture. Further differentiating them and giving the settlement a real lived-in appearance in contrast to many settlements I have seen and admittedly built myself, which look like medieval postcards with copy-pasted structures all over them. This is exactly why I love making these player construction showcases because I end up discovering so many ways I could be making my own settlements look better and more interesting 
and I hope I'm doing a similar service to you all. But if you have any ideas how I could make these even better, let me know in the comments below. Suggestions like those are the reason why I now open up the statistics screen of these settlements during the showcase. This one was played on the standard mode, normal difficulty and hillside map for almost 1000 days, which passed amazingly enough in just 14 hours of game time with 65 raids, over 900 enemies killed, resulting in the current population of 21 settlers. So here is that library I mentioned. It has its own specific design and the most obvious features are the massive entrance staircase and the attic where if we peek through the window, we can find a huge number of bookshelves all filled in. Below are even more of those as well as research tables and under those we find another example of a hollow structure with embedded pillars of different materials. This is another kitchen and that makes two kitchens and two separate food basements located around the village giving the settlers lots of choices and preventing time from being wasted when looking for a meal. The third basement is for something else. Goods needed for a brewery to operate and which is actually surrounded by fields of barley. This is a great design choice as it keeps the production chain short with everything being at the same place. I might even integrate this design into my underground village and plant barley and herb crops in an underground greenhouse with lots of brewing stations. The heat from those alone would keep the plants growing along with the braziers. The biggest workshop of the settlement, made out of wood interestingly enough, is located close by and it's built like a warehouse with only a few ornaments at the entrance. Stepping through the double doors, we find stockpiles of all sorts of raw and manufactured materials, shelves for textiles and the whole assortment of workbenches down to a blacksmith's forge. It's not the prettiest of buildings in the village, but does it really have to be if it does the job efficiently? There are more rooms and more buildings around the village with such a single function, like the small temple and church, the kiln and furnace buildings next to it, and the few rule-breaking bedrooms made from limestone. One thing I have to point out to you before we move on to other settlements is this sort of a tree grove park here. It's designed with mixed floor tiles, diagonal tree lines, chairs for tea time and braziers for warmth. You can see the exact pattern when I change the camera angle and the interesting thing is its floor paths directly lead over to the big church, the library to the side and the warehouse-like workshop at the top, sort of a settlement center. There are of course more details I could spend another half an hour pointing out to you like the extra crop fields and bushes integrated into buildings, the massive gold stockpile for everyone to help themselves but also smaller stockpiles inside settlers homes. If you want to see what else Captain Kent has made you can check it out on his own YouTube channel link in the description where you will also find the email address to which to send your own settlements or buildings to be showcased in this series like the ones you are seeing right now. In case you didn't know, the developers at Foxy Voxel also do videos in which they showcase player creations, so by adding your settlements to their Discord channel, link below, you can get your settlement or some cool single construction project featured there. Now I do have another major settlement to show you during this video. But first, I want you to see this insane build by Starborn, whose other settlement I showcased in the previous episode. This is his pyramid-inspired village of Dragon Veer, and it's massive beyond what words can describe. These screenshots were taken at such a zoomed out view that everything inside of the pyramid became tiny. The ones of you who play the game more often might just manage to make out everything that is on these pyramid layers, but for the sake of all of us, I will zoom in on sections. The very top is given over to pyres and stockpiles for bodies. The paths to this section lead from all sides of the pyramid through what almost looks like trenches with occasional doors. Those ramps also have traps on them, as we can see on the left over here. The next level is where the actual top entrance is located and you can see just how complicated a building undertaking this must have been to set up so many pillars at different angles and elevations to produce this pyramid shape. Below this is where we are in for another surprise, a massive tree grove of all things set inside of this pyramid. 
Besides it, we have simply massive rooms for stockpiles of wood, clay, hay, bones and such, and a long line of bookshelves inside the library. There are a number of empty rooms, which don't have yet a purpose. Just the travel time looks very long between these rooms, so it's great that the staircase is at the center, making everything easier to access. Next level down is even more mind-boggling. There is enough here to feed, clothe, get drunk or filthy rich an entire going medieval nation, let alone one single village of settlers. Here are five separate rooms with shelves for raw food and drink ingredients, a brewery and smelting room, two rooms filled with armor stands, a medium-sized kitchen, one workshop and just outright insane stockpiles of limestone, sticks, iron and gold nuggets as well as coal. The gleaming and shining metals over to the right are the stockpiles of gold, iron and steel ingots. Now hold on to your seat because we are going deeper. This is the level where we find an underground greenhouse which is producing all types of crops, the great hall with food storage room next to it, a bunch of empty rooms in the middle and all the leisure activities, huge game room and both the temple and church equally massive. The same can be said about the armories, yes there are two and the biggest stockpile of textiles I dare say you will ever see. Above that are the workshops, smaller rooms, each specialized for production of bows, wooden weapons, armor and metal weapons. There is still a lot of unused room at this level, so the sky is the limit. Oh wait, that didn't sound appropriate, did it? <laughs> Maybe you have some better ideas, tell me so in the comments. Anyway, at the bottom level we find where the trees grow from and where those settlers actually sleep. The limestone brick stockpile is undoubtedly there to help with future construction projects. You might say this place is missing roads, but do remember everything but the crop fields is covered by limestone block tiles so settlers can move everywhere at 120% speed. This speed effect is something I have explained numerous times in my let's plays and made a guide about, link up here and below. For the last two showcases in this episode, I have chosen one medium scale castle and one other major settlement. First up is this beautiful castle by Flying Fox from Reddit. It is a standard four sided high tower castle with no outer walls. Unexpected feature are pyres at the top of these walls. Not sure why they are there, but they look great and I'm sorry I do not have a night shot of this. The side of the castle where the main entrance is at has this really interesting outer face with several terraces, raised gate, banners and torches all over. The wooden beam with the clay brick roof tiles adds a nice final touch. By the look of the dropped armor and weapons, we can see many raids ended in front of this gate. The window positions on the towers give a really cool checkerboard appearance and it is a design choice which permeates the inside as well. Here in the grey hole it's obvious on the floor tiles and I also must compliment the settlement emblem which I like a lot. Simple and clear, a red dragon on a white background, a classic. We can see more of the inside on this next screenshot where the temple and church are on the same level as the great hall. Above this are a very well stockpiled armory with weapons and steel armor as well as many single bedrooms. More armor racks in them but those are for work clothes and hats. The game tables are in the hallway and we can see some shelves with food and medicine over to the top left. At the bottom level there are a number of workshops and lots of storage space. The weapon and armor workshop is particularly cozy with everything in one place. The rest of the rooms are similarly stacked and filled with workbenches and even shelves or stockpiles. I love just how much was placed here at easy reach of the settlers and it lets them be very efficient. This is all despite the walls being triple layered and even the hallway taking up a lot of space on each level. Overall this is among the most compact castles I have ever had the pleasure of reviewing and showcasing to you and a design I'm tempted to steal for one of my future playthroughs. And so we come to the last but certainly not the least impressive settlement. This one I don't think I would be able to recreate even if I tried. I like to view these showcases analytically and try to find interesting details to point out, but sometimes I fall into the descriptive mode and just narrate my way through an amazing castle or settlement. I do hope it won't happen here because there is so much to unravel 
in Gravesend built by Exergy, who, if you remember, built that Star Force recreation I showed you in the previous episode. Trust me, the inside of this castle is no less breathtaking than the outside. It has a number of levels and the rooms on the top floors follow the non-linear shape of the entire castle. This is the first time I have seen someone put beds together to make couple-sized ones. Definitely a unique role-playing feature. Below we have a library, dining and cartography tables and a beautiful balcony for eating lunch under the open sky. Now the triple size bed on this level is well I don't know who is that for. The future kids if they are ever added to the game, maybe. The huge hallway is a bit of a waste of space while all other bedrooms have a really cool lived in appearance and decor. Once we drop another level down we see for the first time the very high entrance bailey that is in the middle of the castle and behind the front gates. Here we get a better look at it. Simply everything is masterfully designed. The pillars with merlons, banners, double side staircase, the switch to clay brick pillars on the inside from the limestone material used on the outside, just gorgeous. You can get a better look on these next screenshots how this was constructed and this is why I said I would find it hard to even try to recreate it all. There is just so much detail in these walls, outcroppings, interior passageways and many more things I can't even fit into this showcase. I'm not sure how many settlers there are in this element, but this grand hall is like a scene from medieval movies just before a great feast. I'm basically getting Game of Thrones vibes at this point. Moving outside again, we can remain awed by the amazing details Exergy was able to add to his castle and settlement design by combining materials, merlons, pillars, windows and the roof tiles. The design of the tall front entrance supports reminds me of Hogwarts from Harry Potter to be honest. Do note the tree surrounded by the berry bushes on the left. The top down views offer a great way to better figure out the scale of individual buildings and the overall size of the entire main part of the settlement in front of the castle. These aren't particularly tall, better to help the castle stand out. In the other shots we can see more about what is inside of each. There is a church of sorts to the left with an awesome details of red currants in bloom in front of it. What looks like a medieval inn in the middle with different workshops on the edges and stockpiles in the corners. And as you look at the next screenshots, think about one fact. These were all taken in autumn, but this isn't by accident. This too is by design as that is the season during which trees turn yellow, red and orange, which are the colors that best match the castle's clay brick walls and settlement's roofs. Notice how the evergreens don't match the architecture of the settlement and the materials chosen to build it. Exactly the reason why no screenshots were taken in summer or spring. This is an important lesson for when you want to present something. The way you present it in and the background of it are equally important. They should match and not clash, especially when it comes to color. As you can see, not only is the main castle a sight to behold, but the settlement in front of it is also carefully crafted with many details and design choices. I would basically need a video of its own to give this entire settlement a proper showcase and trust me, I will put it on my to-do list because it deserves it. If all this wasn't enough, there is also a village outside the walls with no small number of buildings, crop fields, stockpiles and workshops all lovingly placed, walled and fenced off. I think this was the best possible send off for this episode and I just want to remind you to pick up your jaw off the floor because you might trip on it. <laughs> I have more amazing builds to show you in future episodes and with the upcoming third content update I will probably wait for some players who already submitted their settlements to upgrade them first. Feel free to send in your own builds for me to showcase using the email in the description. This game's player community has already constructed truly inspiring settlements as you have seen in this video and all the previous ones and I cannot wait to see what else you build in the future. Thank you for watching and I wish you all happy gaming.